Welcome back to another episode of Love Island Season 4. We're on Volume 3 now, Episode 6, Bubble Bubble Boys in Trouble. It's time to get ready for your double date, but not everyone is thrilled by the two new boys. It's that time once again when I introduce you to that little slice of paradise known as Love Island. Previously, the islanders became plants for a day. Imagine you're a daffodil that's reaching for the sky. Yep, you heard me right. My happiness looks like a blooming lotus flower. Plants, coming up. Josa and Najuma get ready for their dates. But how does Will feel about it? The girls are busily getting themselves ready to meet the new boys. But there's an all-important question on everyone's mind. Should I bother shaving my legs? Um, I was actually thinking of that other thing. Are my nipples showing through this? Ugh, I'm talking about the new boys. I promise it's all on their minds, really. You look around the room. The other girls are getting their outfits on for the evening. Only you and Najuma are still in your swimwear, and we're the ones that have dates. Oh yeah, we're gonna meet the new boys in the hot tub. I totally need an absolutely banging swimsuit for this date. All right, maybe. Let's get a new swimsuit. Just for funsies. I don't really like any of it. What if I wear the banana? Maybe I should. People seem to like it. Um... I'm gonna go with the white one because I already own it. And maybe I'll wear green shoes just for funsies. No, um, I don't know. Those shoes are probably fine. Let's do that. Damn, Josa, you're really going for it tonight. The other girls whistle. At least give us a fighting chance, girl. Ah, I'm so stoked for the new boys. You hear Tobby let out a small squeak. Ah, sorry. I'm just really excited by the new boys. Maybe it'll help you get over Will. Oh, um. Yeah. Or she's hoping that I will like one of the new ones so she can have Will back, which would be fine. Even if they don't go for me, I'm just really happy to have some new boys to gawk at. 1000%. It really feels like this is the moment the right guy walks through the door, you know? Angie thinks she'll have better luck with one of the new boys. Uh, what about James? She sighs. <sighs> I'm still trying to work out how I feel about James. I could really do with a guy coming in who just blows me away. I'm very excited to meet these boys. Really? Of course, who wouldn't be? Our guys, probably. Oh, they're adults, they can handle it. I really hope one of the boys is tall, fair, with curly blonde hair. That's just my type. And yes, I know that rhymes. Angie frowns. Lexi's ideal man is the opposite of Kobe. Hmm, and she was so very possessive of him. I'm gonna point it out to her. I thought you had it bad for Kobe. I do. But there's nothing wrong with some window shopping. Okay, okay. But you described someone completely different to Kobe. What can I say? I've got broad tastes. Same, same Lexi, same. Uh-huh. You look over at Najuma. She's in the middle of applying makeup. Occasionally, she pouts and winks at herself. Najuma's also going on the date tonight. Should I ask her why she's so quiet or compliment her look? I'll just compliment her. Careful, Najuma. Looking that good, you might turn everyone's heads. Maybe that's been my plan all along. Oh. She nudges an elbow into your side. So what are you hoping for, Najuma? Huh? What do you want to find in the hot tub? Rafi Syed? Rafi Syed? Ra I don't- Is that a person I'm supposed to know who that is? From season three? Oh! Rafi! From- Okay. Yeah? From our season three? The game? Well, yeah. He was on here. But he's now in loads of TV and films. Love in Space, Liar Liar Pants on Fire, Buff Ninja. I'm pretty sure that last one was just two hours of him oiled up and shirtless beating up muscular robots. It was all I could have wished for and more. Najuma likes Rafi Syed. Don't forget the clothed attraction. Oh, I didn't like that one as much. He's always wearing clothes. The clothed attraction. <laughs> I starred with him once. Shut up, no way. Yeah, he's a real sweetheart. What was your role? I had to go and look directly into his impossibly chiseled face and say, she breathes in, tickets please. Lexi's line with Rafi was, tickets please. Um, huh? It was during the filming of Clickety Clack It's a Trap, and I was the guard on it. Oh, I've seen that one. It's about this evil guy whose soul is trapped inside of a train and the hero has to expel it, right? Yeah. I, um, don't remember you. Lexi sighs. The train eats me pretty early on, but before that I had a scene with Rafi. I got to punch his ticket and everything. Our fingers touched momentarily. I don't know if I'll ever experience such happiness again. She sighs wistfully to herself. What about you, Josa? 
If you're actually going on the date, what are you hoping for? The perfect guy for me would be... Um, I don't care, but everyone likes tall. Standard, yes. He'd also be... Um, I don't want him to be muscular. I could go for slender, but honestly, dad bod, is dad bod an option? Can it not be? We'll just, we'll go with slender, cause I like, I like skinny dudes. Oh yeah, so cute. And he'd have, hmm, dark brown hair. I do have a weakness for thick, dark hair. You know, like the color of a chocolate labradoodle. Exactly, chocolate brown hair, something about it. What? You know what I mean, do we? And lastly, he'd be, isn't a joker and a bit of a lad kind of the same thing? Like, I like dudes dudes. I like guys being guys. All right, so he'd be a bit of a lad. Yay, someone with proper bants. All goes quiet for a moment while you think about your ideal man. Just then, there's a knock. Will pokes his head through the door. Hey, Josa, can we have a quick chat? Sure, babe, let me just throw some clothes on. You glance at the other girls and shrug before following Will out to the bedroom. So I got into my bathing suit for the date, but then to go talk to him, I put on my clothes. <laughs> All right, whatever. As an age-old tradition of Love Island, one of the boys is pulling his girl aside for a chat. I wonder what it could be about. The weather? What the footy scores are? Whether or not to rewear the same outfit he's worn for the past six nights? Ooh, maybe, just maybe, it's to do with the fact that his girl is about to go on a steamy date in the hot tub with two new hunky guys. Nah, that can't be it. It's definitely the weather. You and Will step into the bedroom. The sounds of the other girls getting ready echo from the dressing room. Will wants to chat. Isn't the weather here amazing? <laughs> the weather? Let's just say I'm glad I have my big hat. But that's not what I was going to talk to you about. You look stunning tonight, by the way. So you've got the date tonight. How are you feeling about it? Will wants to know how I feel about the date. I wonder why I was chosen. Doesn't sound excited. Doesn't sound like I don't want to go. Middle ground. Clearly because you're gorgeous and one of the most fun people in here. He smiles sweetly at you. He shuffles his feet. It is interesting that the public have chose you to go, though. What do you mean? Oh, like the public knows I'm not 100%? Oh, um, nothing really. Maybe the public knows something we don't. Are you saying they don't believe in us? Or they're trying to hook me up? Yeah, they're trying to hook me up. I mean, they're putting you up on a date. They clearly want something to happen there. What I actually meant was like, maybe one of the new guys has his eye on you. Oh, is he actually blushing? They, they like put actual blush on their face? That's cool. Maybe he said he's only interested in getting to know you or something, you know? Oh. Yeah, I mean, it's just a thought I had. But let's say you get there and he's 100% your type on paper. Could your head be turned? Could my head be turned tonight? Uh, I mean, maybe. It's hard to say until I'm there, you know? Yeah, I get that. And who knows, if they're cute, maybe my head will get turned. Okay. Will gives you a cheeky wink. He glances over towards the dressing room door. So look, I just want you to know that I don't mind what you get up to tonight. If those guys are cool, feel free to get to know them. So why all the questions? What can I say? I'm a curious person. And besides, it's not like I'm gonna just mope around here and pine about it. Will says he doesn't mind what I get up to tonight. Thanks, babe. Of course. Besides, those guys can't compete with this. He gestures to himself. He playfully punches his shoulder. But I mean it. If you get on with those guys, you should feel free to explore that. The two of you stand looking at each other for a moment. You know, there's still some time before I go on this date. What are you suggesting? Come with me. He looks at you with a wry smile. Okay. You take him by the hand and lead him to the roof terrace. You emerge on the roof. The lights of the villa glitter below. A gentle, warm breeze wafts around you. So what's all this about then? I brought you here to... I guess enjoy a date. Yeah, we just coupled up and we haven't even had a date. What? I've got time. I thought it would be nice to have an impromptu date with you. He smiles. You haven't even brought me flowers. Oh, shut up. You take a seat and pat the spot next to you. Will makes his way over and joins you. I should snuggle up to him. Cuddles. You scooch over to him. He moves his arm, making it easier for the two of you to cuddle up. You can smell his cologne. It's an earthy, grounding scent. There's a floral element for sure, but something else. It almost smells like an allotment on the warm spring afternoon. So as this is a date, let's pretend we don't really know each other. That shouldn't be too hard. We have only known each other for a few days. Fair. Okay, I'm gonna ask you a few questions then. So long as I get to ask them back. Of course. What should I ask Will about? Hmm, 
Tell me about a missed opportunity. That's an interesting question. Probably very hard to answer. He thinks for a moment. Hmm, that's a tough one. I guess the sugar plums would be it. Come again? Right, so I was approached by this underground ballet troupe. Will was approached by an underground ballet troupe. You can do ballet? What? No. I mean, I'm flattered, but absolutely not. They're actually a group of dancers that don't fit the regular mold. I don't know if you've ever watched ballet or not, but most of the cast look almost identical. Same height, build, usually hair and skin color too. It's all on purpose. So this cool little troupe of non-conventional dancers approached me. They needed someone to do set and design for an upcoming performance of the Sugar, sugar Plum Fairy. It sounded amazing. So what happened? Right, so I had a bit of a cash flow problem at the time. And don't get me wrong, they wanted to pay me. It's just they couldn't afford much. Long story short, I had a much bigger client approach me for some work and I had to take it. The Sugar Plums found someone else to do it, but his work was so shoddy. You could tell he didn't really care and was just doing it for some quick cash. The dancers still gave it their all and they were amazing. I just sort of regret having to take the money over that gig, you know? Will had to choose money over doing what he really wanted to do. <sighs> I hear that. It sucks, doesn't it? But that's just life sometimes. I'll need to get back to Najuma soon, but I could stay here and ask Will more questions. Should I squeeze in more time with Will? Uh, I like to be able to use all the options, so sure, keep asking him some more questions. Okay, so next, what should I ask Will about? What's something that made you happy? He pauses for a moment. Ah, I know. So there was this really run-down neighborhood near where I used to live. Lots of rubbish everywhere, derelict buildings, that sort of thing. It was a forgotten place, you know? I was only like 19 or something at the time, and had just gotten into murals. I asked the local council if I could use some of the wall space to practice. What did they say? No. Oh. Yeah, I think they thought I was going to just graffiti all over it or something. So I talked to some people I knew from the scene, and they told me how to actually apply the right kind of stuff to say. Like... That it was to help revitalize the area, how it could be turned into a community project. Basically, that it was a legit thing. I also sent them in some of my design ideas. Next thing I know, the application was accepted, and they even paid for my supplies. That's amazing. Yeah, so anyway, I'm still too green to really know what an impact these kinds of pieces can have. At the time I sent that application in, I was just saying those words to get accepted. I really was just seeing this place as somewhere to practice my skills. If I messed it up, so what? It would still look better than the surrounding area. Which, looking back on it now, is a terrible mindset. But then I get started. At first, no one really pays me any attention. But then after a few days, some local kids come out and ask me what I was doing. I was irritated, but I started running through my process, hoping they'd get bored and leave. But they got super excited, they just kept asking me more questions. And I found that I enjoyed answering them. I even let them help me with some of the easier bits. Before long, the piece was done. I was packing up my last few supplies, looking proudly at my work. It was very amateur, but I was still proud. And then this old lady comes up to me. She told me that she lived in the flat across from this wall. She said how much she loved seeing what I'd done and that looking at this wall now brought her joy. He smiles. That mural taught me far more than just some technical skills. Will learned a lot from painting a mural in a rundown area. Is it still there? He winces. Sort of. I went back a while ago, but it had been tagged over. Oh, but that wasn't so bad. What's worse is that the paint had faded badly. I was still very amateur, so I didn't understand how to make it last long. Maybe one day I'll go back and fix it. What should I ask Will about? What's your most embarrassing moment? I was wondering why I was getting so warm in my apartment. Turns out my AC turned off again. It's done this twice in this new apartment. Cool. I'm gonna finish this episode, and then I have to call, get my AC fixed. Hmm, I don't really feel embarrassed by things. No way, everyone feels embarrassment. Oh, Beaufort, no yelling, please. Do they? Okay, well, let me have a think. Oh, hi, Beaufort. <laughs> How you doing? He goes quiet and looks at the back of his hand for a while. Oh, okay, yeah, there was this one time. Brace yourself for this, it takes place in an art gallery. Sounds intense. Scandalous, maybe? It was. So I went to this exhibition at this fairly small gallery. It was around what does it mean to be postmodern. And it was as open to interpretation as you can imagine. Anyway, there was this piece, it was a plastic bin, bright orange, and its lid was slightly ajar. A rotting banana skin flopped out of the gap. The whole thing was meant to represent how as time goes on, we slowly rot or something to that effect. There's this woman standing there staring intensely at it. I mean like eyes bulging, like this art was sucking out her soul or something. I made a joke, it was like, I'm pretty sure the artist stole this from the cafe next door. She laughed, I kept going. She then asked me for more details, well, I was already on the say bad things about this art track, so I continued. I listed off countless things wrong with it, it was almost like I 
couldn't stop. Then I said I'm glad we don't have to meet the artist and pretend I like it. She didn't say anything to that, but that's when I saw her again. What? Well, her picture anyway. It was just behind her on a meet the artist poster. She was the artist? Yep. Hey, thanks for doing this. It really means a lot that you brought me out here. I've had a great time. You stare into each other's eyes. Should I kiss Will? Uh, lean in for a kiss. Why not? Without saying a word, you lean in closer to Will, who does the same thing. Will leans in until the tips of your noses are touching. Your lips are inches apart and his hands rest firmly on your hips, pulling you in. This is getting steamy. Um, just kiss him. You look deeply into Will's eyes, leaning forward to graze your teeth along his bottom lip. You feel a shiver of pleasure as your lips meet in a heated kiss. His tongue traces the outline of your mouth before he nibbles on your bottom lip. Your moan is stifled into the kiss, but you can feel Will smile. Just as your temperature is rising, Will pulls back. Beaufort, can you not step all over me? Has anyone ever told you, you taste great? Has anyone told me that I taste great? Never, I guess, I don't know. Will grins at you and you can feel his stroke along your arm. Beaufort, can you, can you get your tail out of my face, please, sir? This, this is amazing. The touch makes you tremble. For a second, your breath gets caught in your throat. I hope I get an encore soon, because that was a class act. Will wants a future kiss. We'll see. We'll see. Will softly chuckles against your lips, raising his thumb to stroke your cheek. Well, you should get going. We don't want Najuma tearing up the place looking for you. Just then, Najuma comes out onto the terrace. Speak of the devil. There you are, girl. Come on, we don't want to keep the gorgeous guys. She spots Will. I mean, these probably completely average guys waiting. Nice save, Najuma. She flashes a grin. I'm smooth as butter, me. You look at Will. He smiles. Go and have fun. I'm fine, honestly. But you've got to give me the lowdown on your life at the next date. Okay, promise. He smiles. The two of you share a quick hug. See you later, babe. You head outside. You and Najuma walk out into the mild night. The air is perfumed with a mixture of sweet floral scents and the wooden decking as it cools from the back. Back. Baking sun. Baking sun. Okay. The sound of the other islanders still getting ready gently fades as you get further from the villa. Suddenly, Najuma stops and gently touches your arm. Okay, serious talk time. Um, okay. We're about to meet two possibly drop-dead gorgeous boys. We've got to have a plan, girl. A plan? Yeah, you know. You see it on the telly all the time. A pair of sexy singles walking into a bar or club. They turn to each other and come up with a plan. We've got to be each other's wing women, you know? So what have you got? Najuma thinks we need a plan when meeting new, the new guys. Let's just be ourselves. What? That's so vanilla. You may as well serve me sprinkles with it. Huh? Come on, Josa, let's make a splash. I mean, it's a hot tub. We could just jump in. That's more like it, but I've got a better idea. Like, how about this classic? This is my foolproof three-step routine that always ends in a kiss. She clears her throat. First, get their attention. She looks away from you, then turns her head sharply back towards you. She whips her hair. Her braids fly to one side before swinging around her head and smacking her in the face. Ugh, my eye. Um, then next, you saunter up to them. She begins to strut up to you, but slips and hurdles towards you instead. You dive down and manage to catch her. Her head collides firmly against your chest. Najuma just fell onto my chest. <laughs> you all right? Wait, glad I could cushion your fall. You feel her chuckle against you. She looks up at you. So yeah, then you seal the deal with a line like, do you believe in love at first sight or should I walk past you again? You help her stand upright. Although in this case, I fell into your boobs, so that doesn't really work. Ugh, I'm so off my game, babes. These guys are gonna think I'm a mess. Should I show Najuma what real flirting looks like? I don't know. Let's try it, cause I like to use the options. Let's go. All right, listen up, girl. Watch a real pro at work. The concern on her face washes away as she gazes at you eagerly. You step back. The first thing you do is make eye contact. You lock your eyes with hers. The hanging lights twinkle in the rich brown iris. Once you have their attention, the next thing you do is... Are, isn't this exactly what she said? Saunter up to them. You make your way towards Najuma, your hips swaying as if you were treading on a catwalk. Najuma seems transfixed as she watches you sway from one foot to the next. You and Najuma are face to face. Then what do you do? Then you go in for the kiss, of course. Hey! Then you go in for the kiss, of course. Ooh! Should we go in for a kiss? Nah, I don't want to lead her on. Let's go in halfway, but don't kiss. You slide your hands onto her shoulders and gently pull her in. Your lips brush against each other's and you feel hers twitch with anticipation, but you hold back. Then you pull away. At first, she follows you almost magnetically before stopping herself and standing back. I see. You definitely win the right to be my wingwoman any day. 
Well, should we go and put these tactics to the test? Absolutely. You link arms and the two of you make your way to the hot tub. Why am I still not in my swimsuit? You notice that Najuma keeps stealing glances at you, but when you look back, she turns away. You and Najuma make your way up to the hot tub. Suddenly, Najuma pulls you aside. Can I quickly ask you something before we go over to the guys? Sure. So, I've been getting some vibes from you. Is there something going on between us? Like a romantic thing? Because if there is, then now is the time to tell me. Do I have feelings for Najuma? I'm just gonna say no for now. Just cause I feel like at this point something should have already happened, so. No. Ah, uh, no. That's my bad. I totally misread the signals there. No you didn't. I was kinda flirty with you, but. Guess we should give these guys a chance then, huh? Hopefully I'll pick up on the right signals with one of them. Yeah, hopefully. You both walk over to the hot tub. Already sitting in it is a tall, toned man. The light bounces off his white hair and droplets of water glisten on his dark olive skin. Okay, dark olive skin, I love olive skin, with white hair, enchante. I don't know how to say that, but Yusef. Not what I was expecting. Not, not interested. <laughs> I thought it said dark olive skin. He's white, like white, white. Um, but maybe Lexi will like him? His deep voice resonates with a thick French accent. Najuma turns, Najuma turns to look at you wide-eyed. Then the other man, a shorter guy with a muscular body and fair skin, stands up splashing water everywhere. All right, girls, Bruno. Now, don't say this show doesn't give you what you want, especially when what you want is clearly a Adonis-inspired French bloke. Oh, and the cheeky geezer type who has sat alongside him. Some of you may prefer him, but me, my tastes are far more continental. Anyway, coming up, the new boys make an impression. We have a golden opportunity here to test our compatibility. Oh my god, no. And Angie tries to remember what you shout when golfing. Uh, four, wasn't it? Make sure you don't miss it. Uh, so, <laughs> not interested at all. Uh, I mean, I didn't really get a good look at Bruno, but I don't like the name Bruno, first of all. But now that I've seen them, I am very, very, very happy with Will. We will chill there for a bit, maybe get to know Hazim some. Uh, yeah, I wonder how this date's gonna go now, because I'm not interested in how they look. Uh, yeah. Not a very exciting episode, I was kind of bored with this one. Um, but yeah. I'll see you guys in the next one. Hope you're enjoying. Bye-bye.